Hello. I'm still sporting my 60s uh, attire from the weekend. We had a fabulous time in St. Simon's um, at my 60th retreat. Um, thank you to everyone who came. There were um, 50 of us and it was fabulous. Not to worry, we will um, return to St. Simon's for sure. I have lots of fun um, retreats planned. Uh, I drove from St. Simon's to uh, South Carolina to drop my mom off on Sunday. And so I am FOC, fresh out of the car, pretty much. I uh, rolled into town at about 10 after 3, met Aiden at an appointment to get a suit for his wedding, got home about 4.30, and here I am. Dug out the stuff from the retreat, where's the punches I need, where's the paper I need, all that good stuff. So happy to be here, and hopefully some of our sc other scrappy friends will be on here soon. Hi, Stacy. Um, Stacy said hi. So she, um, or she commented, <laughs> and so she's entered for the in the feed drawing, and that's all you need to do to get entered. You just need to like this um, live, and then um, remain in the feed. Uh, and then comment so that the little bot that puts your name into the drawings knows that you're here. So that is important that you comment, say, hey, say where you're from. Um, anything could be anything. And um, all right. Hi, Diane. <laughs> and so I am happy to be home in my bed tonight. This I just calculated. I have been slept in my bed two nights out of the last 12. It's been a whirlwind, but my life often is. It was actually a theme, a little 60s theme this weekend at the retreat, and then the theme continued. My mom and I listened to a great podcast about Woodstock, and we then decided to watch the um, <laughs> the Academy Award winning 1970s documentary on Woodstock yesterday, just to keep the theme going. But um, so good times. Let me, hello everyone hopping in here. Good to see everyone in the chat. Um, let's see, let's go through some announcements here. Glad that you said hello. The, there is a virtual crop. Um, going on right now. It goes through 1 a.m. tonight, Eastern Time. So officially midnight Central Time. And this worked out well last month. I'm actually going to do a sketch live for Tool Time. So you can see how easy it is. You can do it along with me. And then you can post it in the Creative Memories Virtual Crop. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can just scroll down a couple posts on my Facebook page. And you will see how to join the group. And then you'll see the sketches. I posted the sketches. So the deal is Creative Memories throws things away in conjunction with the virtual crop. And I am piggyback on top of that. So if you tag Daytona Area Scrapbooking when you post in the virtual crop with your page, I will enter you into my very own drawing for the small pod, which is right now sold out. That's the little thing in the picture that you see there. It's a it's a really nice, I wish I had one within arm's reach. Um, it's a really nice container to hold pens or tape runners, or small tools or punches, uh, border maker cartridges, all kinds of things. Um, so anyway, they're sold out at CM. I'm giving one away. Stacy was the only one that participated in the February virtual crop. She posted a page. I did too. But she posted a page and so she won. She is a proud owner of a small pod. And so um, if you would like to work on a page tonight, there is still time for you to work on a page and post it. And I know some of you who were at the retreat this weekend were working on pages and that's awesome. All right. So next Tuesday, 
is Techie Tuesday. So I will be doing a design log um, on Artisan 6. So all of you Techie people, if you have Artisan 6, you will want to tune in. Or if the lunchtime uh, live isn't good for you, then just watch the replay later. Um, I have a meeting third Tuesday of the month for most of the year. So that's why I'm going live at noon instead of 7 that day. All right, I have a mini card class going on. This is in person, and it won't be the cards that we're making for the card class for March or April. It's $10. You're going to make two cards. You're going to have a treat, which means it's a Cherry Hill ice cream cafe. So you're going to make two cards, have a treat. It's going to be water, coffee, or um, ice cream. And they do have sugar free and they do have dairy free. Um, and then you're going to pick a gift. So you get to pick a gift and that's, so that's all for $10, your ice cream or water or coffee is included, your cards are included, your gift is included, everything for the $10. I do have some space available. I do have a couple people signed up that next Thursday afternoon. I know it's kind of a weird time Thursday afternoon, um, especially those of you that live far away. I'm sad you won't be able to join us. If you live local, and you're available in the afternoon. I'd love for you to join us. All right, now, my National Scrapbook Day is a virtual event. I've done this since 2020. I used to do my Go Gray in May in conjunction with National Scrapbook Day. And then in 2021, I separated them, went full on Go Gray in May. And then on National Scrapbook Day, I did it as a virtual event. And it worked out great because Scrappy Friends from all over the country, we can meet up on Zoom and on Facebook Live and um, see each other's pages. And I do challenges and lots of giveaways and a going, going, gone gazebo. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, just sign up. So it's a lot of fun. Hopefully somebody in the chat will concur. I can't read because these aren't my glasses. Um, <laughs> So what I want to do is take you real quick out to my website <clears throat> so I can show you um, how to get to the National Scrapbook Day stuff. So I think there are 12 signed up for National Scrapbook Day. That's great. You usually have around 20 um there's still room for you this doesn't start until april so when you go to daytona area scrapbooking.com you will be dropped right onto the calendar and events page and because it's march it will uh you'll be on march and then so you'll need to forward ahead to april and then you'll see on the 11th uh well actually yeah the 11th all the way through through when through the 20th, <laughs> um, you'll see actually two things that day because I try to overlay my regular things. So we'll have a project recipe. I'll do a project recipe that night um, and it'll be the National Scrapbook Day project recipe. So you'll want to have the kit. And if you're going to get the kit, then you may as well just um, join my National Scrapbook Day. So I want to just explain the tickets hopefully you're with me yes it says okay i think i think you came with me <laughs> sometimes when i change a page you don't come with me but you're with me which is good okay so here's what i wanted to see about this event i can't read with these dang glasses on okay so here are the bundles so there's a squeeze the day bundle that's 99.95 so that's pretty much everything. There's a $47 bundle on creativememories.com. It's that bundle plus the lemon punch, which is normally $24.50, and the citrus slice border maker cartridge, which is usually $19.50, plus, um, well, the mini dustpan is sold out. So I am replacing that with something fabulous, much more expensive to me, losing money on this, but you will love it. Um, and it will help you keep your area clean and it's not a lint roller. Um, so, and I can't read with these glasses on. So, um, in a 
na a special National Scrapbook Day flavored simple sleeve. It has lemons on it. And those of you that signed up before you went to St. Simons, you actually got one of those at St. Simons as a little bonus. So that is the squeeze the day. The lemon squeezy bundle is basically um, the $47 kit that's on um, the Creative Armies website plus the National Scrapbook Day Simple Sleeve. So you don't get the cool uh, item in place of the dustpan because that sold out already. Um, and you don't get the tools. Okay, so that's what that one is, the Lemon Squeezy. The Easy Peasy is just the Project Recipe Kit, the National Scrapbook Day Simple Sleeve, and event entrance to your ticket to the event itself, which will give you access to all of my drawing prizes and that kind of goodies. So basically $15 for the event and you'll see that further on. So the National Scrapbook Day Card Kit Bundle um, is $39.95. So if you're one that's not on the subscription, but you like to buy it month to month, um, you kind of get it at the subscription price because if you do the math, the add-on event is 15. Normally it's 30, so that'd be 45. So you get it for 39.95. Um, and there's a digital bundle, which will give you the artisan templates for all of the all of the challenges. So you'll get to do the pages that everyone's doing in paper, you get them digitally. And then you'll buy the kit on your own from Creative Memories. And then if you've already purchased through my website, um, if you've already purchased the National Scrapbook Day items, then you can add on just the event. So um, that that's what the $14.95 is. And then if you're like, if you already are on card subscription, then you would add on the event. And if anyone wanted to just add tools on, maybe you didn't add the tools on when you bought the project recipe from creativememories.com, then you can add on just the tools here. Um, and you'll see that there. So there's no, there's no shipping cost with those there. It's just tax. So hopefully that explains. I know there's a lot of options. I will say probably half of you have already have gone for the squeeze the day bundle and that's awesome. And so we're going to have a ton of fun. If you look down at the bottom of this page, no, not there. Um, the schedule at the top of this page, <laughs> you will see, <clears throat> you will see the schedule for the whole event. So Tuesday, April 11th, there's a project recipe. Wednesday, I put out challenge number one. Thursday, challenge number two. Friday, challenge number three. Today, we have 12-hour Zoom crop from nine to nine. Sunday is the going, going, gone gazebo in the afternoon. Um, Monday is challenge number four. Tuesday is natural scrapbook day. I mean, the card class which is a week earlier than it normally is, because normally it's the last Tuesday of the month. And then finally on Tuesday the 20th, we'll have wrap-ups and we'll have wrap-up and prizes. And what's really cool is this weekend is all in line with the virtual crop that Creative Memories hosts as well. So, um, so we'll get to have that fun. So more with sketches from that. So I'm very excited. So if you haven't signed up, you will want to do that. And if you're just joining now, here, I, yes, I do, Crystal, I need your magnifying glasses. So if you're just joining, I'm still in my 60s attire from this weekend because I had my 60th retreat. And so if you have no idea why I'm dressed this way, let me know. Um, also, I've been in the car all day. I left Greenville, South Carolina, Fountain Inn at um, 8 o'clock this morning. And so I am kind of fresh out of the car. So, uh, okay. That's, so I, that should say 75. Uh, go Gray in May is filling up quickly. So if you intend to go, in fact, the full tables are sold out. Um, and there are half tables. 
so you might be saying, well, if they're half tables, why isn't there a full table? Well, just as a reminder, this is a fundraiser, and it isn't it's two days, but it's not a five-day retreat. So hopefully, you know, knowing that it's a fundraiser and that we want to get as many people in the room as possible, you'll understand why I kind of put a, I don't believe, you know, have all four tables. Um, this way, more people can participate and help us reach our goal to raise as much money as we can for the Cannonballs for Cane Foundation. So if you're planning to come right now, it will be uh, half tables, but you know we always have so many awesome raffle prizes. Um, I have a dining room full of raffle prizes that were donated already that just need to be wrapped up. So you'll want to sign up for that. And then Sizzle and Summer Crop. So these, I've had Sizzle and Summer Crop in the past. Because I'm not doing a summer retreat in the mountains, like I have the last three years, four years, um, I'm going to do two uh, crops in town, two two-day crops. So this is Sizzle and Summer Crop. And then there's the Scrap of Palooza in August. So, um, so do sign up for those. They are going to fill up too. You you got a little time, but I, I do have people sign up for both of those. So if you want to come, you'll want to register, especially if you insist on a full table. All right. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I'm only 200 subscribers. So thank you if you have subscribed. I appreciate it. All right. And then last chance, not last chance. But last reminder before I start our um, pay our tool, tool time, um, where we start playing with the fun new tools, uh, all you have to do is comment and like, and the little bot that's behind the scenes will enter you for ten dollars off your next order. Now let me check because I said this last time. Um, if we get up to twenty, which we are not there yet. But if we get up to 20, I'll draw for two. So tag a friend you should expect to see in the chat who isn't in the chat and tell them to hop on here and say hello so that they're entered. And if we get um, if we get 20 entries, then I will draw for two. All right. Well, let me get off here. Let me put, put this on. on. Let me go away from here. Hopefully I was not echoing. Um, and now I'm just seeing, um, some of your comments. I've lost my glasses, my real glasses. So this should be fun. Now I'm really fine. Blind. So on my desk here is something I meant to, um, is something I meant <laughs> to show in the onset. So this weekend at the retreat, I was um, being busy uh, getting design, designing these cards for March and April. So these are the March cards. And I meant to grab, they come with a full pack of embellishments. I know you love the cards that come with a whole pack of creative memories embellishments. And so these come with the tropical leaves from the vitamin C collection that's no longer available. But Creative Memory still has these um, awesome leaves. And so they are, uh, I just love them so much. Um, and, oh, and inside this one says make a wish. But, um, and I like to say that the stamp is of my dog, Lily. And if you've seen her, then you may agree. Um, so, you, you know, not, not all the time do I have to like cute little snails on my cards. So um, I really, I like the way they came out. I like the colors, they're nice and bright for March. And so if you're on subscription, these are coming your way. Like I said, they're gonna include the vitamin C um, embellishments, tropical embellishments. And if um, you are not on the card subscription, you can jump on the card subscription for $25 a month. Um, or you can just buy one card kit for 30 and um, decide if you like it. And then this is a little sneak peek of the April 
slash National Scrapbook Day cards. So if you're on subscription of the card kits, you're going to get these and we're going to put them together during National Scrapbook Day. They're all like citrusy um, flavored. <laughs> Don't eat them. But um, they are also really fun and they were fun to design for you. So you could just sign up for the National Scrapbook Day card kit and like I said, they that is $39.95 because that includes the card kit plus your registration to National Scrapbook Day. And so that will get you access to all the drawings and everything else. Okay. Um, yay. Now as I have to lean forward to read any comments because I've lost my real glasses. And I'm not going to try to have my family find them. So this could be fun. All right. So this is one of the sketches from the virtual crop going right on right now until 1 a.m. Eastern time. This is sketch number three. It's a two page spread. All right, so I am gonna make them using these two punches that I showed um, in the little preview on Facebook, um, what, um, what tools I was gonna show you tonight. So, this one just came out with the painted garden. Now I realized at some point this weekend, I love this new painted garden collection and I did not post pictures of it on the preview Friday before it was released. I guess I was in Virginia that weekend um, for Aiden's race. I don't know what was going on. I was asleep at the wheel apparently, but I feel really terrible because you know, usually that's your first peak. And the paper is so beautiful. Now, this is just the tone on tone. This isn't even the designer paper, but it's gorgeous. And so that's what I'm going to use tonight because I feel so bad that I have not given this painted garden its due. And I sold out at the retreat of all the embellishments of everything but this and I think a map pack. And I had two sets of everything. Um, so, so, so anyway, <laughs> here we go, painted garden. So this is the sketch I'm going to do. Now a quick word about sketches. The gray scale colors are to be, um, the same paper. So like you could mix it up if you want, but I'm going to make the backgrounds the same for both. So this is part of the background and these are part of the background. Okay. Then there's the mat behind the four by six and four by four photos and looks like white was used or maybe a light color. So I am going to stay true to that and, um, and, and use a lighter color paper as my map behind there and use the same color for these. Now I was doing a quick calculation before. So this will be one page paper, two paper. So that's two papers for this two page spread. Then the 12 by seven, I can get this four by seven also out of this piece. So that's three pieces. I would need another four by seven for this piece, but I also need it for the mat. So my idea is to use one, two, three, four pieces of paper. So two and two, two of the same and two of the same. And then I'm going to use the reverse for this, for this piece, for the mat behind this five by seven and for the, um, for the punches so that I can do this whole two page spread with the four sheets of paper and two of them being the background. So I feel like it's pretty good to be able to do this um, with four sheets. Now, it is kind of a tall order because I'm asking a lot of these papers. Now, as far as like contrast, this yellow and green would need to give me the greatest as far as if I was using the reverse. So I'm gonna try to use the yellow and green um, paper as two of them, just because, well, I guess the white and the yellow are, are very different too. All right, so I'm gonna use two of these. Okay, except that I do really love this mauve color. 
So this is maybe <laughs> I might have just changed my mind in the middle of in the middle of it. And then I'm going to use um, well, I kind of want to do this lighter color as this. So maybe I have to do this. Maybe this and the mauve. I'm going to do it like this. I totally just changed what I thought I was going to do. But let me just flip through some of these and just show you. There's like a coral pink. There's this like, um, like a, uh, what kind of green is this? Like a sage green, but then also a lighter green. Lots of different greens. You know, greens and blues are hard because I know, I know my scrappy friends understand when I say, like, there's a bazillion green and blue papers, but like if you don't have the right one, then you may as well not have any green or blue at all. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it just it just doesn't work. Okay, so I think I'm going to use these for my bases, and then everything else is going to come out of these. Is that right? Mm, I'm scared now. Okay, so I'm going to put my bases to the side and I'm going to go to my cutting. All of it. Yes, thank you, Stacy. Remember, I've, I've, I've dashboard brain tonight. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm going to cut this 12 by 7 and this 4 by 7 first. So I've got my favorite trimmer in the whole world. It's already 12, so I need to just swing out my little arm. Not this arm, this arm. And I'm going to go to seven. So 12 by seven. And that leaves me with plenty where I can do a four inch. So I did seven, four. Now this is going to be scrap. And then I'm going to turn this one <clears throat> and go to seven. So this piece and this piece are done. Now I can get a four by four out of here. And why not? Because it's sitting right here. And now that's done. Okay. So I have one of these and one of these and all of these. Now, just so I don't confuse myself, <laughs> now I'm going to work on the yellow piece. It's it's the same piece, right? I said I was going to use um, two. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I need to get two more of these squares. Now, if I was just using a plain white cardstock for that, then it wouldn't matter. But, you know, I'm a very goal-driven person, and my goal was to do this to with two sheets of paper. So I need to cut three strips. Why three? I need a 12 and a 12, and I need part. I need another eight inches, four and four. So I'm going to have to do um, three of those. I'm going to do them first because a lot of times it's easier to punch. Um, Oh, yay, Marcel. So glad you're home. I'm back. Okay. Um, it's easier to punch a full sheet of paper when you're talking about these punches. Now, this is a border punch. Um, hopefully you're familiar with it. If you're not, there's some things you want to keep a lookout markings on the tool. There are two lines on the front. There are two lines on the inside down underneath. You want to start your paper somewhere in between there. It doesn't have to be all the way to an edge, but if it is all the way to an edge, you will start off with a full with a full punch. So I suggest you get as near to the edge without going over, like the price is right. And longer punch. Now, you're gonna slide, in theory, 
you're going to slide. Now, here's what you have. There's a little diamond. No, oh, you can't see that. There's a little diamond notch on the top that you're going to line up with the trimmer itself. <laughs> Let me go sideways. So you're going to line up the design while keeping this edge flat. And then you're going to slide. So you want to line up that little triangle at the top and the design. And you're going to just keep um, you're going to keep punching and sliding. And the key is to make sure that this paper stays flush with the back of your tablet. And then you get this. All right. So we need to do this a couple more times, three more to be exact. So I am just going to cut this with just a small little, um, so I have a small amount to work with. I'm going to come out to this inch and a quarter up here. I'm, the edge is at the inch and a quarter. All right. That way I can keep it, um, I can keep it consistent. All right. And then we're going to do it again. I'm going to go this way. So you can see, because I don't know why, but this camera, you can't see. So, because you can, you can go either way. Now you see that first one, sometimes you have to pull it out. You can't just slide it. Um, because this little doohickey will get caught up on the inside. So, punch and slide. And after I finish all these, remind me that we have to explore the punch poop. Now, I love this punch already because you know how I like to look for blingable areas of punches. And the middle of these little flowers um, are so blingable. Now... There's some really tiny confetti-ish punch poop. These are actually kind of fun, the little top parts. Not sure what I would use them for. Nothing really jumps out, you know. Nothing is screaming, oh, you know, you use this to make a, what were we making last time? Like little ancient vases out of, out of the, the new one of the new punches. Okay, so let's get this last little piece going and make sure that. Oh, look at what I did there. I did not line up my. It's because of this little guy. The little triangle wasn't lined up right. Oh, this could be a problem. That's never happened. I'm going to go this way because my little thing is intact. Whew, crisis averted on that one. Although I lost my little guide wire. Um, I do love these. I do love these border punches and I love the border maker cartridges. We had a couple of scrappy friends. You know what it is? I wanted to put it out too far. Um, really get into border maker cartridges this weekend at the retreat. I did have to retire a border punch. You know, it does happen. Many advisors do not bring their personal punches um, because of, they get used and sadly they do have a lifespan. And because I just have had 60 retreats and I bring all my things, sometimes that happens. So I have to retire too this year. And every time I think, see, I shouldn't bring them. But you know what? It brings me joy that they bring you joy. A lot of them, 
you know, are retired, can't be purchased. And, you know, as sad as I am that maybe I won't be able to use them in the future, I'm glad that they got to be used on pages now. All righty. So I think we're in good shape. We have to get two more four by four squares and I need a five by seven. So five and nine. Um, I'm trying to think what's the best use of my paper here. No oh boy, this is dicey. I should have, um, I better, I better do my, my five first. Cause I think it's a seven. Okay. I mean, how much paper do we have? Really? Really, Tara? You really have to try to do all this with two sheets of paper? I have jobs. You're right. But I really, I don't like to waste paper. I don't like to waste paper. And I think, uh, I think I'm going to just squeak out enough. That's seven. Oh. I'm going to be short. I'm going to be short. That is super hard. And, I mean, like, just barely short. I might have to um, use my little, use a scrap over here to um, weld, weld a piece. And make it, um, and make it four by four. All right. Crisis averted. Right. No one's going to dissect my page. Now, this isn't the most colorful page, especially when I'm oozed about how beautiful this paper was. Oh no! Wait, I took it back because I chose, I chose this as my background. Now, sadly, I don't have photos to mount on here. And it does require, this sketch does require a five by seven to be printed, right? But I love it because we don't get many sketches like that. And, you know, this would be great for a trip, um, you know, or a special occasion where you'd print one picture as a five by seven. So I need to put this where I can see it. Sadly, if I put it where I can see it, it's somewhere where you can't see it. This goes here, but it's white. Maybe I'll, let me start on this right page so that I can get everything lined up the way I want it. Okay. All right, so um, we're going white on this side. <laughs> All right. Somebody put a train emoji in the chat because I'm feeling like a hot mess express right now. Papers are flying everywhere. All right. So, I mean, don't don't you love the look of this? I do. You know what I don't love? That I did not grab any paper runners. So I'm going to have to do that. Now, this is very sad because it's going to have four sixes. And a journaling box, of course, you have to imagine them right now because they aren't there. But I just love, just, the, I love that even. I do need to grab my, um, I do need to grab tape. Uh, 
And this is a small pod. That's where I keep my tape. And I have no idea why this got blurry. All right. So my repositionable is in here. My regular and one of these other ones. I'm going to use the repositionable on this so that I can just zoom right over it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Katie, for the hot message for us. I know I get a little bit of latitude because I drove um, seven hours today, but I'm always the hot mess express. So why should this night be any different? And I really do wish I had some photos on here. Now I could cut some mats. Let's not the repositionable on the top of our paper. That would be bad. Okay. Come on now. Work with me. All right, so that page is done. Now I can see that I'm a little off center, but that's why I, I went ahead and did this one first so I can match this page to it. Um, aw. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, now, so this page is gonna go like this. And I'm going to move this. I'm going to start by taking this one down, and I'm not going to go right to the edge, but I can tuck the um, the punch underneath the punch piece. I do need to grab my trimmer back and cut two four-inch pieces. Let's put the flat side down. All right. All right, so four and four. I have an extra piece. Now I can add some repositionable to this. And slide that so that it matches. Okay, and then now I just need to get my little squares in this situation here. Okay, so that one I gotta put together. So this one is gonna go here. And this one is gonna go here. Oh, maybe I'll, oh, yes. Now they didn't give the measurement of that, but I don't even need my little cheater piece because it's gonna give the illusion that it's a four. That's brilliant. I mean, that's great. I don't even need to stress about it. Now I can put these down. So, okay, so super easy. We did it with four sheets of paper because they were, excuse my head and my hair, because I'm blind. Flying blind, yeah, let's, let's, let's recap that I'm also blind right now, because I didn't, I lost my glasses in here. I'm using this piece to measure to make sure that those are straight, and then now we can add this piece to it. Now, all I have to do is embellish. Now, the title, they have the title up there. Let's look at our sketch again. So they have this actually down and then a title up here. Um, 
I don't know if I can handle that off-centeredness. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in the middle. And that is the page. Now you do have to use some of your imagination, but there's a four by six, four by six, four by six, four by four journal box. I'll add a title. We'll add our embellishment. And that is the sketch. Now, super easy sketch. So the reason why I'm showing the sketches is a couple of reasons. I want you to see how to use the sketches. And then I also um, I want to show you the tools because it's tool time with Tara. All right. So and then the other thing we've discussed in the past is how with, in the, with the advent of a cell phone, how many more of our photos were up and down, whereas historically, most of our photos were landscape um, because we were using cameras like this, and it was very rare that people would turn them sideways to take it up and down. And so many of our sketches from old, you know, from when we had regular, you know, point and shoot cameras, um, layout featured more landscape four by six, but you'll notice a change in the industry with sketches that they're more portrait because of the phone. People are taking more pictures this way. And a lot of them do lend themselves to a square as well because you're, you know, you, you're taking the picture up and down, but you have a lot of excess things that you can cut off. Okay, so that is this <laughs> and that is uh, this punch which now i've completely spaced on the name of it and it's over across the room well maybe if stacy is still in the chat my lovely assistant she'll remind me is it uh floor pedal what just a, a note about these i think i mentioned it last time when i look at this punch i see a bouquet of flowers like the way the V is and the flower it reminds me of the flowers. So for like um, rehearse, like uh, recitals, recitals, Mother's Day, or you know, spring pictures, I I love this one for that. And I just love that it's blingable and you have these flowers. And if you don't want to use three dimensional blink, you can just use a regular paper um, hole punch and then put a different color in the middle. Um, those of you that you use like stickle or whatever, they, they don't get super bumpy and you can just add a little thing. You could also use your dot pens. Those of you that have dot pens, you could just do a dot pen in the middle. But to me, it very subliminally says bouquet. I, and I don't know if anyone else sees that too. Um, okay, but now I haven't shown you the cloud frame punch and hold on. Leave my seat again for the blue paper. While I'm over here, I'll tell you that it's Flora Peaks is the name of that. Lost. Please understand that when I say I just got home, I just got home. And can you hear me? Where is the blue paper that I did have? For the love. Wait, I dropped it. Oh, here it is. <laughs> did you think I left? I did. Okay. So I have two of the blue. I mean, this is a cloud frame punch, but that doesn't mean you have to use it with blue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so I've got some, I've got some blue paper from Q the Blue. I should show you. This is what it looks like. And same as I mentioned about 
the um, different kinds of green, there's also so many shades of blue. And if you don't have the right blue, then sometimes you feel like you just can't continue with your page. Um, okay, so this is a cloud punch. Now it's a frame punch. That's why I wanted to show it. The frame punch has these lines right here. So with the frame punch, you can start out using um, any even number square. So yes, isn't it great, Lori? I mean, blue and green will work with, I don't know, 80% of anything you have going on in your scrapbook. Between what people are wearing, and what the sky is, and where you are in the graph, or you know, wherever it just works. Okay, so you can use this punch as just a regular border punch, or you can use it as a frame punch. So, if you're going to use it as a regular border punch, you're going to go in right at the lines, like I just explained in the last one, in between. And you're going to punch and slide and punch and slide. If you're going to use it as a frame punch, then you have to start with these this little line on the outside right here. And it you you want to do one, and then you just have to like commit and trust the process, because kind of like putting our albums together, how people um, look at it, um, when they're putting albums together. They, they it just looks it just looks and feels wrong until until you get it done. So you got to just keep moving forward. So this one, I'm just matching up the design on the side. There isn't a little triangle or anything um, to to line up. They're all a little different, but they're all equally easy to use. These frame punch. I don't know if Linda's on. Linda's a frame punch fan. She loves to collect frame punches. She was the first one um, to say, you know, she wants she wants a frame punch. So now you see what happened here. And I punched all the way through. Now we're gonna turn it and you're gonna um, well actually we're gonna go to the opposite side and I'm gonna line it up with that line and we're gonna do the same thing. Now let's let's examine lots of little smiley faces. You can make some great faces with the punch group from this punch. We're just gonna Plug and chug. Okay. So we're left with this. I kind of went one, one too far, but that's okay. You end up with these little tabs and then you're gonna line up those tabs with the edge and that's gonna give you the right. So that disappears and it makes that edge really nice. And so that's why I said it looks weird, but it's going to give you that nice corner. And there's specific punches from Creative Memories that are this type, that are the, um, the frame punches. And so even that one that I messed up, the reason why you don't want to do that all the way around is because you need a square to line to line up. So if you do it on one side or two sides, like um, it's it's not a big deal. Let me go this way again so you can see. Sorry. So once you once you make that first cut on your second time around, it um takes off that little square. What I love about these, and I did this as the biggest, like the biggest version of itself, right? I did it on a 12 by 12. 
And but you can do it on a 10 by 10 to start, or you can do it on an 8 by 8 or a 6 by 6. And so what that does give you, you know, different, whoa, punch down. It'll give you obviously different size squares and it'll give you different opportunities to use to use them. Well, that's very much contrast here. How about that? So now you have this background um, that you can put on the back of a page to go smaller, like four by four. Then you can use it as a journal box, but you can, you know, you can also chop this right here and split it across two pages. Um, you can put it on the ends of your page. I can put half of it over here and then half of it um, on the on the facing page, make them like bookends. Um, in fact, let me just show that. But these, um, the spider web one, I think was the, the one previous to this one. That was a frame, I think. I think that was the last one. But so now I just cut it kind of in, um, not halfway, but like, So I can put it here, and then let me take this other one and go here. I can do like this for a quick page. I can also put it on the outside like this for a quick page. So yes, it is a cloud frame, and they definitely look like clouds. This would also be a great um, page maybe for... Um, playing in the rain or how, how you're spending, you know, a rainy day with the grandkids or something like that. But it's also just a really fun design, which adds interest to the pages. Yeah, Lori, that's a great, that's a great point. Um, I love, this would be great for like even a sunset picture because you've got the, the clouds. Um, a lot of times those clouds, that really add, you know, dimension to the to the sunset pages. All right, well, that is it for the cloud cloud frame and the floral peaks that I dropped on the floor just a couple seconds ago. Um, let me get rid of this. Oh, sorry, Deb. Um, I thought I said Lori, but yes, Lori's in the chat too. She loves the cute blue. All right, and I definitely have some great sunset pictures from St. Simon's. That's one of my favorite things about St. Simon's. So I'm back here with my sunglasses on. I can't see anything, but I will hopefully be able to read the... Um, the winner of the drawing which we are going to do right now now let me see really quick can't read <laughs> all right we don't have 20 so oh i want to see if all had my glasses <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to unpack all of my stuff from the retreat. I have boxes and bags everywhere. All right. Let's see who our lucky winner tonight is. $10 off their order. Maybe they want to use it on a frame punch. Maybe they want to use it on the, the cloud for the floral peaks. I don't know. Lori, what do you so maybe it's the tractor punch that just came out, out on Monday. Oh, or the barn and um the barn picket fence quarter maker cartridge, which you might have already ordered yesterday. I have the drawing, so I don't know. Well, congratulations, Lori. Hopefully she's still on. Lori, are you still on? Yay! <laughs> still can't read. 
but I'm to the glasses. They they have no they have no magnification. They're not helping. Um, they shouldn't be hurting either, but for some reason I can read better without them. I don't know why. Well, thank you all for joining me tonight for tool time. Don't forget to hop on over to Daytona Area Scrapbooking and register for National Scrapbook Day if you haven't already. It's an all virtual event. You can participate from everywhere. The big event is that Saturday. Hold, please. Let me look at a calendar. Saturday, April 15th. Oh, that's a bad day. Tax day. So, oh, but we'll have till Monday. I Don't worry. I won't be going to taxes then. But we will have all day Saturday, 9 to 9. You can come and go as you please. I will be on Zoom for 12 hours that day, hanging out with my scrappy friends. Um, you can come and go as you please, but I'll be there. And um, we'll have lots of fun and for 10 days. And it'll be great. So don't forget to register. And it's not too late to get your card kit for March if you haven't done that. I think that's all. I think I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> and until I see you all again, stay scrappy, my friend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.